1871. That's what we've read and been told. 1871, the year Charles Trumbull Hayden founded Tempe. Of course, that history is both true and not quite so. It's true that Hayden arrived in 1871 for a second time at the western foot of the butte we call A Mountain. It is true that when Hayden arrived, he created a ferry to cross the then raging Salt River and built his first home here in the building now occupied by Montes La Casa Vieja. But when Hayden arrived, he founded Hayden's Ferry, an apt name for a locale in which the main business was the ferry. But there were already people in this valley. Some had just founded Phoenix a few months earlier. Others had traveled north from Mexico to start farms. And still others were here on the lands first cleared and irrigated by their ancestors. Among other accomplishments of those farmers from Mexico was the digging of the Kirkland McKinney Ditch and the founding of their town on 80 acres provided by the promoters of the irrigation ditch. That town was San Pablo and rested on the south foot of the Butte. But San Pablo would not have been created, nor the ditch dug, had it not been for those whose progeny still lived in the valley. For the Kirkland McKinney Ditch was merely the redigging of the ditch created a millennium before by the ancestors of those who eventually organized into the Salt River Pima, Maricopa Indian Community, and the Gila River Indian Community. You see, Tempe's history dates back long before Hayden arrived, and his arrival and very success depended on those who came before, succeeded before, and then, in the case of one essential element, vanished, at least for a while. And it's from this broader history of Tempe that we can, should, frankly, we must draw lessons for our own age. Charles Trumbull Hayden realized that the economic success of his ferry was quite volatile. Some rains were so heavy that the river was impassable, preventing travelers from crossing. This feature gave rise to the opportunity to operate the Hayden home as a modest hotel, offering food and lodging for a price. But dry seasons followed many rainy ones, so the ferry was not even necessary at all for many of the travelers. Further, future technology, like bridges, which were encouraged by Hayden despite his economic self-interest, already threatened Hayden's nascent industry. So Hayden changed with the times, and quite quickly. By 1873, Charles Trumbull Hayden sought to and did found a flour mill. That mill succeeded for more than 100 years. It was Hayden's ability to see the need for change and recognize the importance of his community's economic success that brought about the construction of the mill on which Tempe would first build its future. But that mill's very existence also called on our community's ancient past. For the canal that brought the water to power the mill was an ancient one that had watered the fields of the prior society. That society had succeeded for more than a thousand years. And yet, notwithstanding its success and experience with this desert environment, in large part it vanished. We've learned a great deal about the likely causes of that society's retreat from this valley. Substantial changes in the environment likely played a large part from the tree ring studies that examine the annual rainfall using logs found in Hohokam villages. We know that the original inhabitants of the area were faced with a long drought that lasted approximately 60 years. From the experience of our collective ancestors, we can acknowledge that if we do not understand the environment in which we live and take care to prepare for the vagaries it can bring forth, we too may see our community vanish from this place. Sustaining our environment may be the prerequisite to sustaining ourselves. Finally, this entire historical journey demonstrates that the Tempe of today is a unique creation from the continuous intertwining of many cultures. It was Hayden's business approach that created a ferry and then a mill. But when Hayden arrived, he was aided and welcomed by those who preceded him. Further, the grains ground at Hayden's mill were not grown by Hayden or even the farmers of San Pablo, but by the descendants of the ancients who had created the canal system on which Hayden's mill and the farmers of San Pablo depended. It was the great grain farmers of the Salt River Pima Maricopa and the Gila River Indian communities that supported the success of Hayden's Mill. The flour mill's water came through a canal rebuilt by the farmers from Mexico, but originated by the Hohokam, whose successors grew the grain to make the mill a success. Ultimately, it was a combination of these interconnected societies, Don Carlos's Hayden's Ferry and San Pablo, both nurtured by the welcoming support of the members of the Salt River Pima Maricopa and Gila River Indian communities that brought forth our community. And quite literally, it was the merger of Hayden's Ferry and San Pablo that resulted in the city of Tempe. It's on this history that we continue to build Tempe, and it is this history that informs our efforts today. From this history, we also understand the importance of sustainability. As Hayden realized, our community must change with the times to retain a robust economy, or there is no means to form and sustain the community. 
As the ancient and first founders of the society that preceded Hayden learned, even with more than a thousand years of effort and experience, the environment may control our destiny. Even with due regard for our environment, our community may be overwhelmed by natural forces. An environmentally sustainable approach to our work may be the key to that survival. And we should recognize by the character of our community, with a modern history that dates back 136 years, but with roots that stretch to a time immemorial. It is a unique community fabric. It is woven of diverse threads into a colorful tapestry that calls on many qualities for its cultural vibrancy. Unless we retain the diverse textures of those threads and protect them from deterioration, we easily can lose our sense of community without which no real community would remain. We here today have inherited a community with these three foundational elements, economic vitality, a unique, albeit fragile environment, and a diverse, rich, vibrant cultural heritage. We here now have worked and will continue our ancestors' efforts to strengthen these elements and make them everlasting. By doing so, we can recognize that we are seeking to create a sustainable community. And by doing so, we can acknowledge that Tempe is a great Arizona city.